zero. So today is week one, day one. We are going to start with transformers. That is the main topic of our week one. And the first topic we are going to discuss on day one is nothing but um, the problems with RNNs basically. So I have a diagram of RNN here if you notice. And let's see what basically I'll explain RNNs in a very short thing. I can't go in detail but I'll explain. So you see there is a hidden state here. So there is a hidden state here. And there is one xt here and finally this rnn isn't complete there will be an output here okay i didn't write it here because it's not there in the diagram so basically there are three parts of the rnn one input and one uh, hidden state and not one hidden state like a hidden state and an output so while we are doing backprof of this there will be some weights assigned to this Right. That's very logical. Let's say W of H, W of O, and W of X. Right. So what? I'll not go in detail, but what happens in um, RNNs is basically when we do backprop of this, the technique is called BPTT or backpropagation through time. So what basically happens in this is that uh, when you are calculating let's say any loss function right the loss function so the loss function has to be calculated with respect to the weights of the height or weights of the x or weights of the o because when you are doing the loss function uh, thing we have to basically we are doing gradient descent right the gradient descent is what gradient descent is what we, we have to update it by doing a minus alpha into the derivative right so the derivative will be if we are updating the output so it will be with respect to the output with respect to the x or with respect to h so in any of this case in bptt we follow a chain rule okay so we follow a chain rule so in chain rule what happens if let's say um, if you know chain rule, like derivative chain rule, is that uh, we can increase as many variables we want. Like if we have, let's say, dz by dx, we can write it as dx by dy into dy by dx, something like this. And now I can increase the variables as much as I want. So what happens is that, let's say if we were um, doing back prop for wh right so you have to consider all the w all the hidden states so if this is this is a simple sentence let's say it's i am here so for small sentences this value of gradient can easily be solved okay can easily be solved but if you had a sentence of let's say i am mohan and then 100 words, not 100, let's say 10,000 words. Then I say he is there. So the, like we have to think, ki let's say if we are starting the, for the, we are finding the gradient for this output, right? And this is so far from Mohan. So there will be around 1,000 uh, 10,000 chain rule gradients, right? Here. So, what will happen? The gradient value will decrease. Of course, as you are going backwards, the gradient value decreases. So, the thing is that you understand we are getting something called a vanishing gradient. Vanishing gradient means what? The gradient becomes zero. Close to it. It's actually so small you can't actually count it by a computer can count it and saying that we can't count it as per se it will be 10 to the power minus 18 order 20 order who knows 10 to the power minus so small you can't calculate it so this is what we are getting vanishing on gradient so now this due to this vanishing gradient that he is no more connected to mohan so this becomes something called a context loss 
so this if you notice what we did was that we lost context and we had vanishing gradient if you understood the whole process this is what basically the problem with rnns is and what we try to fix with attention and basically we are going to make a transformer and we are going to try to solve this through this thing so this is for the basic how what the problem we have currently with rnns hello so now we'll continue with embeddings so let's consider the sentence transformers are really great so first what we should do is we tokenize them what do i mean by tokenize by tokenize i mean i'll break them into separate words okay let's say these are the separate words i'll make a big gap so what are the other words transformers are really great so now i have a vocabulary let's say the english language has a vocabulary i don't know the exact number it must be around 50000 i guess so i have a vocabulary of 50000 so in that 50000 this will have some token number let's say this is 23 this is 1 this is 17 this is 51 this is not realistic i'm just making this up but they will have some token id so this token id from this token id what we discover we with this token id like identifies this word to so transformers is token id 31 so with that we have a vector so what is the size of this vector the size of the vector is always 1 into the dimension of the mod whatever the dimension is in bert small it is 768 i guess yeah it's 768 in bert small in gpt small also it's um, 768 um in gpt is uh, two models i think it is 768 so it is up to you okay so let's for our simplicity let's have a thing of uh, let's say 0.1 0.2 0.0 0.5 0.1 uh, 0.7 so this is the let's say the vector of transformers so this is what this is my words these are my token ids and now from that we are getting embeddings so you might uh, tell ki why do i need this why do i need this and we usually get this vector there are some algorithms we can you can see is word to vec fast text or let's say glove these are some awesome um, stuff uh, that help us make this vectors okay we are not going to detail of that uh, will be linking resources for that you can check that out yourself so i am just going to discuss why this is very important okay so i'll get this here so let's say we are making a 3d coordinate system okay 5 uh, yeah Yeah, this is my 3D coordinate system, right? So now let me discuss the. Okay, you have seen these reasoning problems, right? So let's say man is to king. Then what is a woman is to? Of course, it's queen. The answer is queen, right? So what this vectors represent is that the words that are very similar to each other will stay together. So let's say if the word dog is here, right? the word labrador will be very close to it but the word cat will be very far from it that's the meaning we are representing vectors so that they can signify the word or how two words are very close to each other okay so logically let's try to solve this kind of problem with a vector kind of sum okay so let's say we can we do this can we think this problem as our answer is queen so let's say queen is our answer we know the answer so queen will be what queen will be man plus king minus woman sorry sorry yeah so it will be what it will be basically king minus man plus woman 
so we are basically like removing the man characteristic of the king so king is something royal right so you have something royal and royal plus woman becomes queen so this is the logic so let's try to think of this as a vector so let's say the man vector is here and let's say the um let's say the king vector is here okay so this is king And this is man and let's say we have a queen vector we have a woman vector here okay so woman is this color okay so what is our rule simple rule we have to do king minus man okay king minus man so we will take this man we will reverse it done so we will take this here now we have to find the difference between these two so we did this is minus man and this is king now so king plus minus man so it will be in this direction sorry i think this color will be blue i don't know why i changed changed it yeah give me one second i'll change it back yeah sorry so here this will be my what is happening why can't i see like yeah this is the correct app sorry my bad so this is the king minus man the what is my answer king minus man plus woman so let's take this vector here so this is woman plus king minus man so my final answer let's make it let's say purple so my final answer will be this so this is my woman vector or like i should transpose this here yeah sorry so this is my woman vector basically sorry this is my queen vector this is my queen vector that i am getting here so this is what basically what we try to encapsulate by uh doing embeddings basically this is what we try to show ki yeah this is embeddings so that's what our um goal is while doing embeddings okay so the final part is positional encoding so you have done the input we did the input embedding now uh, you must wonder what is this positional encoding so let's say if i wrote this sentence right i have a polite cat and i wrote this sentence hat i have polite ah does not make any sense in the second one right but if we give an input embedding on both of them they will have the same input embeddings but you know is a human that the first one is uh, correct and the second one does not make sense right so we need to add some position element into it position element how can we bring some position element in it we add positional encoding so we have this formula for positional encoding so see i have a polite cat so it has some embeddings let's say i get the embeddings as e1 e2 e3 e4 and e5 now what i do i add a positional element to each of them pe1 pe2 pe3 pe4 and pe5 so what i do this one tells me the position now if you notice this clearly the sign thing happens the sign thing happens only for the even parts see it's happening for the even parts and the cos thing happens for the odd parts sorry cos one happens for the odd parts so uh, now if you notice something this only depends on the position and throughout the model you know the dimension of the model is always same no you are embedding the thing so the dimension of the model will always be same the d model will be same so you can easily tell the positional embeddings are 
constant it they're not going to change throughout the transformers so every time you're using the same uh, positional embeddings only so now if you notice something now what we do is that we have our embeddings and we have our positional embed embeddings right so we add them to finally get our input our input to the transformer the encoder input to our transformer so it is our input so our input becomes what embeddings plus positional encoding so this is our input if you notice the positional encoding is here the input embedding is here and then we are adding it and then we are giving it as the input so that is the positional embedding part of this so with this day one ends and we will continue with attention in the next video which is tomorrow so thank you for tuning in